Hi. A couple of videos ago, we had a look at these aluminium PCBs, which we had made at our sponsor for this video, PCB Way. So these are some LED strips, which are going to be installed in some aluminium profiles uh, that are then going to be installed in this house. And during that video, we discussed various methods of driving these LEDs. Now, what I want is the ability to control the brightness of these LEDs, but also limit the maximum current at 150 milliamps. So we went with, uh, on the PCB, just some low resistance resistors. So we've got one ohms each, three ohms in total. And in that video, we had a look at some of the calculations. And with that three ohms of voltage drop, we basically drive the LED strips at 19.8 volts. And that allows us to drive them at 150 milliamps. But what I failed to take into account is that these LED strips do have quite a bit of voltage drop. And considering each of these boards is drawing 150 milliamps. It only took about five of these PCBs before the voltage dropped so much that the difference in brightness was quite noticeable. So one way that we could get around that is by um, supplying it with the supply voltage every three or four PCBs. We can still connect them all up in parallel, but then have additional uh, feeds at separate points. Um, but I don't really like that, and it doesn't really work in the installation. So. One subscriber in the video, Henrik, mentioned why don't we use some two-pin constant current drivers. And I'd completely forgotten that these existed. And that's what we're going to have a quick look at today. I'm sure many of you have seen these before, but they will be new to some of you. So we've got these little devices here. And let's have a look at the data sheet for them. So this is the device that we're going to be testing today. It's the AL5809. And this is a really straightforward device to use. It's available in a whole series of fixed constant currents from 15 milliamps all the way up to 150 milliamps. A lot of these were unavailable based on the uh, current issues with actually trying to source components. But I did manage to get a 150 milliamp version and some 60 milliamp versions. I think ideally I would have settled on 120 milliamps because 150 on these LEDs is far too bright. Uh, but we can drive it at 150 and just reduce the maximum brightness in PWM. So these are really straightforward devices to wire up. You just simply put them in the series string of LEDs and it will limit the current provided there is enough voltage drop between pin 1 and pin 2. So the internal diagram looks like this. So we've got an LDO which basically is our reference. Uh, we've got a current mirror and a current setting resistor. And this resistor was built into the device and you pick a particular part number which basically just changes the resistor here to change the constant current. And the specifications say that the voltage between in and out basically needs to be between 2.5 volts and 60 volts. So when we go back to our calculations that we've got here, um, we need to add about 2.5 volts onto the um, forward voltage of those LEDs. So we probably want to raise this voltage up to around at uh, 22 volts or so and we can do that with our modified power supply no problem so that should work quite nicely on these pcbs now these devices are linear devices so as soon as we're limiting any current we are dissipating power in these two pin packages so despite the fact that the data sheet says that the voltage between the two pins need to be between 2.5 and 60 volts if we were driving them at 150 milliamps and we tried to maintain 60 volts between the two pins, we'd actually be dissipating 9 watts in that device, which would probably incinerate it straight away. So they do have these graphs in the data sheet as a first port, just to see what kind of input voltage you might want to suggest. Um, and with our green line here, which is 150 milliamps, it's saying really that our input to output voltage needs to be less than 8 volts. I'm aiming for somewhere around here, about 2 or 3, maybe 4 volts, just to cope with the voltage drop. But we will check the temperature of these once it's in operation. Now fortunately I picked 1206 resistors and these are precisely the correct footprint for these constant current diodes. So simply we can desolder these resistors, we only need to desolder one of them, put that one in its place and then we can start testing the PCB. But before we do that a quick word from our sponsor PCBWay. So PCBWay have always been very competitive on their pricing on one and two layer boards with 10 PCBs for only $5. But the four and six layer boards were quite expensive and they've now reduced the pricing of those by up to 20%. And also at the top of the website, they've got this banner here. And if you click on that, it takes you to the new design contest in conjunction with Mauser Electronics. 
and it's well worth taking a look at this contest because the prizes are quite significant. So you submit your design based on one of the three categories here and at the end of the competition period they will be judged by the panel of judges and the prizes are well worth taking a look at. So as you can see first prize is $1,500 cash plus a $200 coupon plus a Raspberry Pi 4. The second and third prize is also quite significant and they've also got quite a few other prizes here. So 10 winners of $100 cash plus coupons plus a multimeter and everyone who participates also gets a Raspberry Pi Pico. So well worth taking a look at at pcbway.com. So we've got our LED strip here that we're going to desolder two resistors from. We'll go for the one right in the middle on each of these boards. And we've got our Metcal PTZ tweezers. So this should do the job. But bear in mind we've got an aluminium PCB. So this is going to be trying to sink all the heat away from our soldering iron. So I think the first thing we need to do is add a bit of solder to the resistor so that when we put the tweezers on there we can get some thermal contact to that resistor. So let's do that first. Right, so that's a bit of solder on there. Not particularly neat. We'll get a bit of solder on the tweezers as well. And let's see if we can pull this off the PCB. There we go, that's one of them. And um, we'll do the other one as well, same method. So get a bit of solder on the resistor. Bit of solder also on the tweezers. And there we go. So as with any other surface mount part, we'll just put a bit of solder on one of the pads. Use that to tack down our constant current diode. And then a bit of solder on the other leg. And there we go. So we've got two LED strips here, 150 milliamps per strip, so 300 milliamps in total. Let's see how it works. So I'll bring up the supply voltage. And the LEDs are starting to conduct at about 16 volts. Now it should start regulating somewhere around 22. And there we go, so 22.5 volts or so, we're properly regulated at 300 milliamps. And we can momentarily bring that up to 24 volts and we're still regulated there properly. So that seems to be working quite nicely. So it's been around 10 minutes now just to allow everything to get up to temperature. You can see our current is very nicely regulated at 300 milliamps. So these devices do seem pretty precise. Let's have a look at the voltage drop across the diode. So on the multimeter in the middle there, you can see we're just above the minimum for it to be regulating properly, about 2.7 volts. And across the LEDs is around 3.2 volts. So these diodes should still be quite warm uh, not as hot as the LEDs, but I think they will be getting right up there. So we're going to use our Unity Pro uh, UTI 690B. And if we have a look at the screen here, which hopefully you can see, uh, we've got the three LEDs across here. And if we point the crosshair at one of them here, that LED is running at about 58 degrees C. And the constant current diode at about 52. So really not any concerns there about the temperatures. These LEDs will happily run all the way up to about 90 degrees C without uh, too much issue and same for the diode. Above that they'll obviously still work but then our junction temperature is going to be quite a bit hotter than what we can see externally and probably towards the upper ends of the limit. So temperature and everything all looks fine. 
Now we need to think about actually dimming these LEDs with these constant current drivers. So the data sheet has a bit of information on how to achieve PWM dimming with the AL5809 and it recommends a PWM frequency of between 100 and 200 Hertz which is quite low. I would prefer to have the PWM frequency around a kilohertz just so there's no chance of any kind of flicker. So we're going to test some of these things today but basically all you need to do is chop the incoming waveform and it will change the brightness of the LEDs. Now there's nothing that we can actually damage in the AL5809. There's no capacitors or anything, it's all passive. So when the power gets shut off, the LEDs will just turn off. And when it turns on, uh, there's probably a slight delay before it's regulating, uh, but we shouldn't really have any issues with any kind of damage. So we should be quite safe doing testing. But if you look at their recommended frequency and dimming, dimming range, at 100 Hertz, they recommend only from 5 to 95 percent and at 200 hertz from 10 to 90 percent which is quite high on the low side i would like to be able to dim it quite smoothly right down to zero percent and they're recommending here an on time of at least 0 0.5 milliseconds which is the reason how they've got to those figures but when you look at the waveforms what it's effectively saying is that it's going to take about 50 microseconds for the current to ramp up which i'm saying is our minimum on time. Uh, I don't really see why they've said the minimum on pulse width should be all the way over here because by this point it's already regulated so uh, we should be perfectly fine dimming below those numbers. Right so we've got the LED strip hooked up to one of my control boards and I've also got the waveform generator connected to it so we can control both the frequency and the duty cycle. We're at 10% duty at the moment and that's giving us about 10% of the original 300 milliamps so at 100 hertz we're definitely able to do 10% duty cycle if we change that duty cycle down to the minimum recommended uh, 5% you can see we're about 13 milliamps so um, we're definitely still got the LEDs illuminated but the dimming is starting to go non-linear and if we decrease it down to 1% which is here technically we should be reading 3 milliamps and we're down at 0.6 but the LEDs are still illuminated. So basically what that says is that although um, we've got non-linear dimming, we have got full control of the brightness of the LED right until the point where they turn off. So it's not like they suddenly shut off at a certain duty cycle. It's just that the dimming starts to go non-linear. And if I leave it at 2%, for example, and change the frequency, we see that effect even more. So we're at 100 Hertz, 200 Hertz, 300, 400, 500 hertz. So the LEDs are still on and we can decrease the duty cycle further and the LEDs pretty much turn off at about, well, less than 0.1%. So we're fine in terms of control of the LED, it's just non-linear. And if we increase the duty cycle here at 500 hertz, We're at 10% here, and at 10% we should be reading 30 milliamps, but we're off down at 10 milliamps. Fifty percent duty, we're at 141, whereas we'd normally be at 150. So just again, slightly lower than where we should be, but it still works absolutely fine. 90%, 261 milliamps, and then 100% is you might just be able to read up there 301. So we've got full control of the LEDs. Basically, it's just non-linear dimming, which is still absolutely fine. I haven't really got an issue with that. Um, in terms of current, it's non-linear, but in terms of how the eye perceives it, that's quite a different story. So uh, again, we can calibrate for some of this in the firmware that would be on the LED control board. But as I can see it, it seems to work absolutely fine and I think 500 Hertz is a perfectly acceptable frequency for the PWM dimming of some LEDs for ambient illumination obviously if it was in a workroom where you're using machinery or something like that you would want to increase that so you don't get any stroboscopic effects but for home lighting 500 Hertz is perfectly high enough so that all seems to be working quite nicely and all that remains is for me to now um, desolder a bunch of resistors on these aluminium boards and replace them with these constant current drivers. And I hope some of you found this video useful because probably not all of you have come across these two pin
constant current drivers before. And it's a really neat solution because you just replace the uh, current limiting resistor with one of these drivers and it limits the current to those LEDs very nicely as you saw. So don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments in the comments section down below. A big thank you to my Patreons who are always supporting the channel. And don't forget to enter the PCB Way PCB competition with a chance to win those big prizes. So I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.